Hello and welcome to the next episode of Digital Twin. Today we will talk about traceability and step-by-step process how to implement it in manufacturing company. Stay tuned. Digital Twin podcast is a place where technology and business is going hand in hand. If you are thinking about digitalizing your company, you found the right place. Podcast is hosted by Adrian Stelma, consultant who implements IT solutions for manufacturing companies. And Paul Pahovic, industrial digitalization expert who helps global companies to optimize production processes. That was, uh, that was great. That was so much energy in that intro, Adrian. That was, that was really good. Thank you. I'm trying my best. <laughs> <laughs> that was really good. Let's, um, let's talk about how to implement traceability. As, sure. as um, you are one of those people that can actually talk about it from experience. Uh, and uh, you're also the creator of a 15-step <laughs> process, right? Because I, I did ask ChatGPT about your 15-step process and ChatGPT didn't know. <laughs> you ask, uh, like, <laughs> how does it look 15-step process yeah. from Adrian? Yes. Okay. I, I, Adrian, uh, Adrian's uh, a way of implementing. Um, please scrape, scrape the internet uh, and, and tell me what is, what is Adrian's way, but... That tells me that that you do have relevant experience that we'll use today uh, to talk about um, implementation of of of, of traceability because you know it, it is um, it is a buzzword uh, but it's also when you get an expert you know mm-hmm. uh, talking about it then 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 you know you realize the benefits the business benefits of it and and uh, within the fifteen steps that mm-hmm. we will discuss. I believe there will be um, that that will that you know making decision if you should implement it or not is gonna become more more clear because uh, you'll understand you know how technology can can help your business uh, business problem business problem business challenges mm-hmm. right now. So let's maybe you know summarize whatever we were talking about. Uh, in the previous episodes that that that, that we uh, that was related to traceability yeah so today we are more uh, i would say focus on uh, on uh, this uh, process of implementation traceability but in previous two uh, episodes we talked about in general what traceability is and uh, to sum it up, I would say that traceability is a way to know exactly, to track and trace, you can say, the product or item on the entire value chain from start till the end. Uh, if you th- think about data related to this process, and it could be related with uh, geolocalization, so where is it? Or it could be how it was manufactured, so what kind of, uh, I don't know, parameters, temperatures, and so on, uh, it was related to it. And f- in manufacturing, it's very important because uh, it makes uh, the entire process more safe, more secured, and also more efficient because if you track in real time what exactly is is going on with your raw materials and in your in and if with your products during the process, you know how to uh, how to tr- uh, how to you know uh, change the process uh, online. Sure, that was that's the summary of what we uh, talked about already, right? So let's yeah. let's um, let's jump to you know the the core value of this episode, and maybe maybe we can you know kind of describe why traceability is is important mm-hmm. why implementing traceability is important and then you know what are the benefits for your organization you mm-hmm. know, if you're thinking of should i implement traceability or not mm-hmm. what would be the benefits um you know it, it's interesting because s- some time ago like two or three years ago there was a study uh which uh was done by ay so one of the biggest consulting companies in the world and they did it in India, and they asked the manufacturing companies, the biggest ones in India, I think 1,000 or something like that companies, which are the most beneficial technologies which they can uh, just implement in their uh, in their companies right now. And for uh, 
overall uh, manufacturing uh, KPIs uh, visualization, it was like uh, the, the, the number one. Uh, it was uh, 62 percent uh, companies put it in like a number one, and the number number two it was the track and trace uh, the product on the entire value chain. So traceability was number two in this in this study. Yeah, do you know why? <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, uh, about benefits because we mm -hmm. talked also about the benefits in last episode as well. But in general, to summarize it, I would say it's it's related to uh, to uh, to certain things. If uh, you ask me in one sentence uh, why it's important for the manufacturer, I would say it's the way to not uh, uh, it's the way for the CEOs and the managers to make sure that they will not go to jail. <laughs> 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 and uh, why is that? Okay. Because the entire process is documented, mm. and uh, this is the first thing. And the second thing is that you can avoid uh, selling something in the market which is not 100% secured. Because if you have a... Because uh, we were talking and we will talk and not about the entire traceability regarding to the geolocalization. We'll talk only what's going on inside of the manufacturing plant from this raw material goes inside of the plant and what goes outside of the plant regarding to the processes of of uh, of production of those materials. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. you gather data, uh, you connect those data together, uh, you make sure that the quality is uh, is is okay, right? Because you know in every step uh, how the quality data looks like, and you are making sure that it meets the goals. Uh, also, it's regarding to the quantity and efficiency of production because you track it in real time. So if there is something wrong in one machine, you can just, for example, change the plans for the other ones to make sure that the entire plant is running. So yeah, that's the like the, mo the most important ones. So cost effectiveness and, and quality. Yeah, I think uh, at, at the end of the day, quality is also about money, right? So f at the end of the day, traceability is, is, a, is a tool uh, to you know manage your resources better and, and then manage the quality better and then manage the relationship with your end client better but also <laughs> you manage the relationship um, with you, like other companies that, that you collaborate with right yeah yep so uh, should we should we start talking about the process should we sure. start talking about you know how what is what is required mm -hmm. you know for the 15 step um of uh, of the implementation because we'll be talking about your um pretty original way right mm -hmm. of of i i would say because chat, yep. chat, chat gpt wouldn't was, was i was unable you know to to uh, duplicate uh, the 15 steps of adrian so mm -hmm. what is required there at the at the beginning uh and then what are the 15 steps? So first of all, uh, it's not that it's required, but I would say it's something which makes the entire process easier. So there is some th uh, some things which uh, company, manufacturing company can do before even talking to someone else uh, from outside, like mm -hmm. uh, a consultant or, uh, or implementation uh, company or something like that. First of all is to making sure that you exactly know how your process flow looks like uh, inside of your company. So for example, if you have uh, different uh, processes which are involved, uh, different uh, machines in it, so you know exactly how the flow of this raw material looks like between those different machines. So this is the first thing. You have described it down, mm -hmm. you have a flow charts and so on. This is something which is very important and you can do it by yourself or you can just find it inside of your of your organization second thing is you ask yourself if you have any standards regarding to uh, architecture uh, it architecture so the way uh, different uh, computers and different uh, sensors are communicating to each other and if you want to change that if you don't have those kind of standards uh, you also can do it by yourself or you can do before implementing this traceability the second th the, the next thing will be uh you know uh, source codes 
for um, PLCs, uh, for sensors, for some IT systems, which should be involved and which should uh, communicate with traceability system, mm -hmm. right? Uh, because you, if you have it, there is a big chance you can implement uh, the traceability. Sometimes you need to implement traceability system inside of existing PLCs in the machines. Of course, it depends on on different uh, different processes, but uh, this is one of the ways, right? And uh, and this is the the most important things. Uh, and the last one would be like a general overview of you can think about how much you want to automatize the entire process mm -hmm. of, uh, you know, data flow. I mean, if there is a possibility that all of the data to traceability system will be taken from devices, sensors, PLCs, ERPs, uh, and so on, or there should be a manpower involved which have to write some data inside of the system or type something manually. Okay, so the, the, the deciding uh, how much of the data will be um, transferred manually and, and, and how much data will be collected automatically, right? Yeah. And then, okay. Uh, so yeah, that was like the, um, the basic information on how to get ready. Mm -hmm. uh, and then is it the time for the 15 steps of uh, Adrian's approach? Yeah, sure. Traceability? Yeah. Yeah, yeah so... In general, uh, if I'm talking to someone who came to me and talk, okay, I want to have a traceability in my manufacturing company, the first step and the first question I ask is why you decided to have this system, right? Because, uh, you know, in the production manufacturing companies, there's uh, like tens or hundreds uh, different classes of IT systems, right? And why you want uh, to have automated traceability system? I mean, what is your motivation? If you're mo Because mo in most of cases, the motivation is I internal or external, right? The external motivation means that your customer uh, told you that you have to have the system. And if you don't have it, it means that uh, they will not uh, they will not buy uh, products from you. Mm -hmm. The internal means that you know uh, that you feel that traceability system is something who may can make you have a better efficiency. So it's not related with some legal terms or or relations with your customer. It's something which is uh, coming from inside of you. So this is the first step. Okay, so understanding uh, the needs probably right because you kind of described it uh, differently but um, if the traceability is just a buzzword then you have to figure it out you know what what, what that actually means for you mm -hmm. so just looking at that at that technology and, and and trying to figure out what would you what would you like to do or, or what are you required to do and and uh, you know this like like you said this could be you know, being able to work with the global uh, car manufacturers, for yeah. example, right? Yeah. So, or, or maybe there is, uh, during this the, 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 the process of production, there's, you know, so many mistakes made by people that you also have to, you know, track that. So, yeah. understanding your needs and then, you know, defining uh, what part of the traceability system would be important uh, to address that, uh, the, that issues that you're dealing with. What this is so this is the number one this is the first step of Ad, of Adrian's approach yeah what is the second that. step then uh, the second step will be you know going deeper in the first step and having a general idea uh, of uh, what is the S is situation mm -hmm. so I know why a customer wants this uh, the system uh, implemented in this system mm -hmm. but um, what uh, because you know. Depending on the first step, I know exactly what uh, could be the potential scenario, right? The first one, if the customer wants uh, have an external motivation, as I said, mm -hmm. usually they already have a specific documentation how the system should work and what kind of problems he should uh, address, mm -hmm. right? Because his customer told him. Mm -hmm. So he is actually uh, using the experience from the customer. And the second one, it's harder because you have to develop it by yourself or with me, for example, as a help. 
So I'm going deeper in this in this first first one, and I want to have like a general idea uh, what's problems uh, there are which need to be solved, but diff uh, by different users uh, from the system, and um, to know what tools I can use to solve this problem. Mm -hmm. So I have general idea, general matrix, you can say, with problems and solutions, and the 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 uh, third thing in the second step <laughs> will be problem solutions and budgeting so roi for each of those solutions that's uh that's that, that's only a, a lot of steps if if step number 3 has three different elements that's that's a lot um okay can you do you think that you know, we can kind of go through all of them in, in detail, all the 15, 15 ones, or some of them maybe you can just mention, and, mm -hmm. and then some of them, you know, just 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 talk about them a little more. But yeah, if we if we do it for all the fifteen steps, then <laughs> <laughs> then it will take an hour. <laughs> so, in, in your opinion, mm -hmm. the the next step, uh, first of all, what that is and how important this is. Uh, the the third one will be the decision if you want to start with mm, proof of concept project mm -hmm. or you want to go more broad i would the, say the question is yeah. should, should shouldn't you always start with the poc you know it depends of experience of the company because mm -hmm. it's possible that someone wants to implement a traceability system in a specific area mm -hmm. but he already have experience with traceability systems in different areas mm. so if so if if this is something which you are doing the first time you always should start with uh, with POC project but if it's you have some experiences from different branches or different areas it, you, you can think uh, more broad i would say so you can say that that specific area that that you're planning on on, on implementing traceability mm -hmm. in this could be a POC yeah. basically yeah okay. it could be it could be POC and P POC in traceability makes sense if you if you uh, create a final product from uh, from a raw material mm. so if you have just let's say your company have 100 machines but the process flow from for one product it means that it ca have to go for through like five machines you can do a poc on those five machines it doesn't necessarily uh, you know it's not good to do it on one or two machines you have to catch the entire process flow from so raw to, so to find those product. number three now number numero cuatro. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So cuatro, it will be like a defining the process flow. So now you know the POC. Mm -hmm. uh, you know general one, what, what modules you you will do, what problems uh, you will solve, and mm -hmm. so on. And that now you 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 have to define the entire process flow uh, for those P this POC. So you should define a very mm, very uh, detailed what system should do on all of those machines uh, and what will be the interactions between the operator, let's say, the mm -hmm. different people from different departments, machine, and so on. Sure, and at, at this stage, mm -hmm. who's involved uh, you know, in deciding? Like, let's say that, that you are the consultant running this, this project. The, who, is, who is involved on, on, the, um, on the client side you know, for all of those? Yeah, and this is a very good question because in every step of this process, different people are involved. Mm -hmm. Usually the first steps, first one, th uh, the first one, second one, and third one, it will be mostly, uh, you know, the managers uh, involved uh, and responsible for entire plant. Mm -hmm. But if we think about process flow, we are talking about engineering departments and people which are involved directly for engineering this, uh, mm -hmm. this area of this, of, of this PLC project. Okay, so 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 okay. That was num num number four. Different people, di different people are involved, and then when is the time you know to decide if you're gonna use barcodes, if you're gonna use uh, RFIDs? Like, is this is this the time or not yet? This is the fifth step exactly. <laughs> okay. Exactly, it, it, it's like that because uh, after you know the process flow, after you know what the POC project is, mm -hmm. now you think about how the identification will work. Work mm -hmm. right, so. You know, for example, that you are implementing this traceability on five machines, and now you have to ask yourself, okay, so how the system on the second machine should know about the specific part which was done in the first machine, right? So you need to have like a unique 
QR code or barcode or whatever you you think about, uh, mm, which is specific for your for your process. Uh, uh, on which you will know that this is this uh, specific part and not something else, right? Okay. So this is this 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 moment. You define what how you will uh, how you will identify this item, and what technology you have to do to implement this identification. Okay. So, mm-hmm. I think the next step we'll, we'll see if. Um if uh, if I can figure out your process, then <laughs> okay, because uh, the the next step would be um, to set up uh, data collecting points, and mm-hmm. and 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 that would mean when exactly uh, are you uh, tracking and collecting uh, the data during the process, right? So is it like whenever the raw material arrives, or when the raw material becomes uh, a product or whenever it's been shipped already you know to to some other vendors um uh, is this number 6 uh, or not really yeah in number 6 is in general you have to define what kind of data will be related to each of the machines so what kind mm-hmm. of information you want to gather on it or on each of the machines which are on this process flow. Mm-hmm. It could be, for example, temperature. It could be like some, uh, some you know, electric, uh, how much uh, electricity you used. Uh, it could be 100 different informations. And, but you have to define what is important for this specific product and what, uh, what is not. Okay. Number seven. Let, 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 me, see, let me see if I can... Figure okay. out number seven. It's number seven. So I'm so predictable. You think? <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> but but um, but it just makes sense. I, mm-hmm. I believe that whatever you're talking about makes a lot of sense. So this should be, you know, implemented if you're if you if you've done uh, the integration of of traceability system. This is probably the proper way of of of, of doing of doing it. And mm-hmm. I know this is this is your system that you created, mm-hmm. the 15 step of Adrian's. But I believe there are other people that have implemented traceability as well, and maybe, um, maybe that that's how I can kind of you know figure out what would be the next step. Mm-hmm. Is this the time mm-hmm. to decide if the off-the-shelf solution is acceptable, or we have to do some custom work, or not really? Um, I would say that after you know what will be the identification and you know exactly what data is important, now is the time if you think about what are the data sources, mm-hmm. right? So, uh, and the the thing you, you you the thing you're talking about, so it will be what kind of uh, custom coding is involved. I would say it will be the next one mm-hmm. because if you know exactly. Uh, in which uh, what kind of uh, what kind of, from where you you need to have this data and as i said it could be a manual work for example mm-hmm. all of the traceability c- could be just uh, information typed from operator mm-hmm. or it could be uh, taken exactly from sensors or it could be taken from plc which is connected to sensors right so after you define that you will know actually what on the market is left for you for implementation because some of things, uh, some of the systems are just not the right fit right now, right? For sure. your process, sure. for the thing. Yeah, and the next one will be will, will be what kind of custom coding need to be done to, to for the implementation of this uh, scope for POC. Okay, custom coding. So so it's, so it's possible that 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 you are using so the custom coding. There's always uh, this custom coding is always in place, even if you're implementing off-the-shelf solution. You still have to, you know, ad- adjust it, you know, integrate it, and you still have to do some custom coding, right? Yeah. Uh, if you think about automated traceability system, there is always a custom coding because every machine is different, every uh, process is different. But the problem is if you just starting from you know blank page and you custom code the entire thing mm-hmm. or you have a system which is actually having a modular uh, you know it, it have all different modules which you have to just integrate and do a custom coding 
but it will be like 20% of the entire thing or maybe 30%. But the 70% is something which is already done and which uh, is already uh, taken from experience from other customers which are similar to your uh, business. Okay, so that was number seven, number eight? Yeah, number seven, number eight, yeah. Okay. Is the next step okay. the integration with other systems? Uh, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, not really. Now okay. we, we think about architecture. Mm -hmm. So we think about what will be the architecture of the IT OT uh, mm -hmm. system. So we know from please, where we have to... Have explain IT OT. Yeah, so OT, um, OT sphere is uh, something which is regarding to machines, right? So it's like a network uh, between sensors, between PLCs, and so on. An IT network is something which is, for example, have on your computer and your office. Mm -hmm. So there is a bridge between IT and OT, and this is now the time which you have to define this bridge. So you have to say, okay... I need to connect all of the sensors together because they are not connected together. And then I have to figure it out how to make a bridge between those data, which I want to have in the system, and my uh, my uh, servers, which will be actually uh, uh, gathering all of those uh, this data, right? So now you are defined the, the architecture uh, of uh, of the entire uh, systems, uh, data sources, uh, and the specific uh, information. Okay, so what well, what's then? Are, are we are, are we? So that was number nine, right? Yeah. So n n number ten, is it like the, 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 the like testing? If that actually not yet, okay. not yet. Yeah, no, 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 not uh, till now. We didn't implement anything, mm -hmm. right? Now we are doing. Uh, I would say the concept on the right way to make the implementation very, very easy. Mm -hmm. So we have to define all of that to make sure that, the, the, you know, if we came to implementation, what will be the, I would say, the 16th step, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, it will be done, uh, you know, in a proper way. Mm -hmm. So the next step will be what kind of hardware is needed. Because let's say uh, during this, all of this consulting process, which we talked about, we, 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 f we figured out that there's some information missing. Mm -hmm. let's say, and we have to implement some other sensors, first thing. Second thing, uh, for example, we say, okay, that there is an interaction between the operator and the, and the system is needed because, for example, for uh, starting the production orders and so on. Uh, so we have to buy like uh, HMIs and so on for the for the operators. So now is this time we, we, we define all of the hardware necessary needed for the implementation okay um so that was like number 11 or something number 10 yeah it number was 10 yeah. five more to go yeah <laughs> <laughs> we can do it <laughs> we can do it yeah but let, let's uh, let's speed up a little bit so okay we have all the hardware we have all the plans ready what are we doing now that's number 11. Now we will focus about the business data. Mm -hmm. So we know the technical side. We talked also about the business data on the first step. So in general, we know uh, what on what business data we have to be focused. But now we are talking about how this data should be, vi should be shown by different reports or visualizations. So we look at the, the, the current way that, for example, reports are designed. And we think how to how the, to implement the system the way that the current design it will stay the same thing, the way or it will be, you know, uh, uh, somehow uh, changed, but in a way that people will, will not, you know, have a revolution in it. Okay. I don't even know <coughs> what's number 12. I have no idea. Yeah, you actually talked about it before. Now we are talking about broader context. Mm -hmm. So we think about other IT systems or other mm -hmm. uh, other things which the traceability should be connected to. So now we are thinking about it should be connected to ERP, it should be connected for planning, for example, f to warehouse and so on. Maybe it should be there should be a, br a broad visualization for the final customer and so on. So now we are talking about connecting this traceability system to other other IT systems. Okay. And we figure that out. We know, you know what other systems this our system has to integrate with. Are we um, 
starting the implementation phase now or not, not yet. yet? Not yet. Okay. <laughs> Not yet. No, uh, the, as I said, the implementation uh, stage will be the last one uh, because all of those steps are important to making sure that we have a project documentation. Mm -hmm. So described exactly in any area of engineering and business how the system should work. And the se next step will be the defining if the system should have any kind of process control, which means... That, for example, if there's something wrong with the with the part on the first machine, what the second machine should do with it? I mean, for example, if you have a not okay part which was produced in the first machine, you take this part and take it to the second machine. Mm -hmm. If the system should just not let you produce on the second machine th this wrong part, or th it should just ignore it or just tell you, I communicate that there's something wrong. So this is the part which you define the, the process control. 14 and 15. <laughs> I know. I already know that 15 is the start of uh, implementing that. So what's, what's, what's left before we start the implementation process? Um, okay, so what's left is, uh, for, uh, is ERP. So you have to focus on ERP because every traceability or AMS system have to be connected to ERP. So... There's a lot of work uh, connected to defining how uh, th those two systems should communicate, what kind of data should be, you know, send it to each other, who should be the master, sh who should be the slave of this conversation, and so on. So this is the step which you have to define it. So it's impossible to have uh, pr properly set up um, traceability without uh, ERP system in place? No, it's possible, but uh, most of the bigger companies already have ERP systems. Mm -hmm. So it means that why we should retype the same data, which are in traceability, for example, to ERP, if the systems can just uh, connect to each other. But uh, of course, it's possible to implement traceability systems without ERP. Okay, so... Uh all the 15 steps are... are, are, are last one. <laughs> the implementation. <laughs> last one. And, and, and last one will be, uh, will be you know, I would say, binding the, all of the information we gathered together mm -hmm. to make a uh, clear-cut, uh, I would say, documentation for anyone who will, st who, will make sh uh, who, who will start the programming. So now we don't know what kind of... Uh, uh, exactly what kind of... what name of the system we will built uh, but we know exactly how he should work what will be the environment uh, what will be the uh, overall cost of hardware uh, the infrastructure and so on so we are ready to start the i'll say the purchasing process takeaways <laughs> i think we should i think we yeah. should absolutely do takeaways now uh what is your takeaway um my takeaway it will be like um because i saw a lot of examples of companies which didn't do the steps mm -hmm. uh, and who wanted to uh, all of the uh, companies which were wanted to sell the system to do it by uh, for them for free <laughs> for example and it's very mm, problematic because you know if you hire like five different companies which implementing IT systems and mm -hmm. all of them they, they do this 50 steps by themselves it means that you have five different scenarios and you have no idea uh, which one will be a, a proper one so first of all define the entire scope of the system and be sure how it sh should work from the scratch and then find someone who just implemented the uh, your ideas and your broad, uh, you know, scenario which you built. Okay, uh, just just to to sum it up, like <laughs> uh, the traceability is uh, in, in manufacturing is a critical tool for like improving quality, managing risk, also satisfying customers and driving efficiency. Uh, and it's becoming more and more uh, important because the complexity is becoming the compl complexity of, of, of production and, 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 and supply chain is becoming more and more uh, complex, especially in uh, the global uh, supply chains. Uh, and, um, and yeah, I think that's it. I think I think you did a tremendous job. <laughs>
sharing your 15 15 um, uh, step process and i'm not surprised that some companies are not doing this because what you described seems like a lot of work yeah yeah, yeah. It, it usually took weeks or sometimes months well, to, to sounds do it like more than a week depending on the company right yeah. so i'm not surprised that people sometimes choose the easy way yeah. out and they messing their projects up so thank you and i uh, will see you next week thank you bye